our last of this type of torch, which is your least expensive torch head. And I have it hooked up to the MAP gas tank just because it will uh, burn just a little bit hotter and it'll make our life just a little bit easier for this course. So let's get this adjusted. And this one, you'll notice there's a little bit less noise. So this one obviously is quieter and it has a little bit sharper flame, a little bit narrower flame. And so this one, I think of the other two, this is the torch that I choose to work on when I'm making, working with this type of torch and making my basic beads. Uh, this is what I will use for some demonstrations, things like that. Uh, so less of a noise factor and a little bit smaller, sharper flame for this torch. So I have a question uh, here from uh, Melanie. Is that torch as noisy when using bulk propane? My question was about yes. the torch with the blue cylinder. The so blue cylinder, that one is, yes. The, this the, one. the noise factor is the noisy. same. Doesn't matter whether you're using a bulk tank or whether you're using the little tanks. The, the torch head itself is a noisy torch head. And so... Yeah, so and I, that, that's the one I have here at the this, studio. And it is it, super noisy. <laughs> yeah, so the, the noise doesn't really uh, matter so much uh, whether you, you, what type of fuel source you're using. The noise is going to be there, always going to be there. So Jen wants to know, does it burn hotter because of the gas or the torch head? The gas. The fuel gas, uh, as far as your heat, makes uh, a difference because the MAP gas has an additive put in it that makes it burn and combust a little bit hotter. Uh, when I use the uh, more advanced torch and add the oxygen, the oxygen causes the propane to burn hotter. So it is the, the fuel that you're using that determines the, the heat factor. And Heidi asks, if someone has carpal tunnel and has wrist braces, would these be safe to wear? Uh, yes, as long as you, you know, your, your wrist braces, uh, as long as you're, you're careful, don't put them in the flame, uh, you should be able to wear your wrist braces and be just fine. So, and uh, guest 748, why would you use Boro versus soft glass? Pros and cons? Pros and cons, Boro naturally lends itself to sculpture. So if you want to do more sculptural work and make uh, figurines, things like that, Boro is my glass of choice. For making beads, uh, Boro is okay. It's not my favorite glass to make beads with. It's just a different type of glass. And uh, the softer glass, the color palette is different with the uh, 104 to uh, and that range of, of glass. So it's just a matter of, do you want to go with the color palette that Boro has, or do you want to go with the color palette that the uh, lower or higher coefficient glasses offer? Uh, also cost is a factor. The bo your Boro glass costs more. So comparatively, you're looking at uh, $60 a pound price range uh, for Boro where the uh, 104 efficient glass can be anywhere from uh, $15 on up to $100 a pound, just depends on what colors you get. So your uh, higher coefficient glass, you have a little bit less cost depending on how you're getting set up and what you're doing. Paula so. asks, how closely do the COEs have to be to be mixed, or do you not do that at all? I usually do not do that. I, uh, one thing I have that we can go through here, I have some glass here that's a 90 coefficient, and I have uh, my regular glass that I use all the time that's a 104 coefficient. And we can do a stringer test, 
And if that class bends at all, I won't use it. And as a general rule, I stick with the same coefficient throughout the whole process. I don't mix coefficients at all. And so uh, there are exceptions to every rule. Uh, some of my frit that I use is a little bit different coefficient, but I use such a small amount that I can get away with it. So when, let's go on. Are we ready to? We're ready to get going. Ready get to get going? Yes. Ready to start making a bead? Well, we have here some mandrels. Ooh, tell me about tell mandrels. Tell me about the mandrels. They are, uh, but you hold one if you want to show them. Okay. Uh, they are super they're, thin. They're super thin. <laughs> they come in different sizes. These are uh, your stainless steel uh, wire. Uh, these can be uh, picked up at the glass supplier or uh, ordered from a glass supplier, or you can go talk to a welding store, welding supplier shop, and ask them for a stainless steel welding wire, and that'll work. They come in longer lengths, and you just cut them in to whatever size you want. Oh. Uh, these, I, I prefer to use a nine inch length, and I use a green scrubby to rough up the wire just a little bit and clean off any dirt that might be on it. By the way, what is the name of the last torch you used? This one here in front of me? I think or so. The, the one? Or let's go over all of them. How about that? Okay. Uh, this one is a very simple torch that's available at your hardware store. Probably be able to find something similar to this. Maybe not this exact one, but find something similar in the plumbing section of your hardware store. Uh, I don't know the exact name for it, but it's used for soldering plumbing pipes together, brazing, things like that. Uh, it just has the narrow skinny head. Uh, the other torches uh, are bigger, bigger, broader heads. Uh, the one, uh, the biggest one, the one that's probably the most noisy, the first one I used, that one is referred to as a hot head quite often, uh, but it's also found in various different areas uh, in your hardware section. Uh, it's sold by your glass suppliers for this purpose, and it's a very popular torch. Uh, so. Cool, and Paul asks, so you, so you don't decorate beads made with window or bottle glass since you don't know the COE? That is correct. Uh, if I do a stringer test and it, I feel like mm, I can get away with it, then I may mix colors. But with bottle glass, generally, I, used, I cut that one bottle and I stick and use that bottle to make that color of beads. So you may have some of your different wine glasses and your blues and your greens and some browns. And then, and people like that, that they're sold as recycled glass beads and they come from whatever might be their favorite drink or, or whatever. But I usually stick to that color and don't mix one bottle glass with another bottle glass because you never know what you're gonna get. Uh, you can mix if you want, if you choose to, but that's, Mix at your own risk. Uh, there's no guarantee that your beads won't crack if you mix. So our process, we've got our torch set up. We're ready to make beads. We've got a good work surface. One thing we're going to need is some bead release. Uh, our bead release is, I'm going to have to mix that up. It separates a little bit when so when it Let's when it sits see. for a few days, I don't, don't know, know if you can get a get a shot, get of, a shot of that, but it's kind.